Israel is one-tenth of one percent of the world's population, and we are receiving uh, 20 percent of the global share of private cybersecurity investments. We're punching 200 times above our weight. That tall tower there is the United States. The United States is bigger than Israel. But it ain't that much bigger than Israel. You know the five eyes? Israel is the sixth eye? No, Israel is the second eye. Welcome to WTN Media, your guide to the intricate web of the digital universe. Today, our focus is on unraveling the mysteries of international cyber espionage with a special emphasis on Israel's cyber capabilities. Before we dive in, I want to be candid with you. My initial intention for this channel, voiced by AI, was to keep it strictly impartial. Yet personal identity and experiences unavoidably shape its creation. In the process of creating this content, I was exposed to footage and stories that deeply resonated with my roots. I grappled with the decision to even share my identity and my background this early. However, after witnessing some heart-wrenching scenes and delving into numerous articles, I felt a pressing need to act, however small the gesture. Throughout this video, there may be instances where certain events or realities are shown in a raw light. This isn't an attempt to skew your perspective, but to share a narrative that occasionally brushes close to my own personal history. Although I strive for neutrality, politics has a way of subtly permeating the narrative. I genuinely hope that this added layer of transparency doesn't cast a shadow over my channel's intent, which is to be an unbiased platform. However, authenticity matters and there's a line that sometimes needs to be drawn. Thank you for joining me on this journey. Let's embark. We're about to delve into a journey that charts the unseen cyber power behind global espionage, originating from a land steeped in a rich yet tumultuous history, Israel. The Middle East, a melting pot of cultures, religions and ancient civilizations, is a region synonymous with turbulence and transformation. It has been, and remains, the fulcrum of geopolitical conflict, which echoes through the annals of history. At this hour, American and coalition forces are in the early stages of military operations to disarm Iraq, to free its people, and to defend the world from grave danger. The Battle of Iraq, the United States and our allies have prevailed. And it is true that much of the intelligence turned out to be wrong. As president, I'm responsible for the decision to go into Iraq. The friction between Arab states and Israel, the quest for dominance between Sunni Saudi Arabia and Shiite Iran, and the enduring Iraqi and Syrian civil wars represent just the tip of the intricate conflict iceberg. Against this backdrop, new forms of warfare have emerged, transcending the physical borders of nations and bleeding into the digital sphere. This revolution in the landscape of conflict has been rapid and remorseless. Cyber warfare is now a primary arena of contention, blending seamlessly into the political and ideological battles that rage across the region. The cyber dimension adds a whole new level of complexity to the Middle Eastern power dynamics. In this digital battlefield, offensive and defensive capabilities have been aggressively pursued by many regional actors, escalating the stakes of conflict exponentially. States deploy an arsenal of digital weapons, employing hackers to breach the digital fortresses of their adversaries, extracting valuable information or planting destructive malware. But amid these regional conflicts, one nation has set itself apart in the realm of cyber warfare, Israel. Against the backdrop of constant threats and challenges, Israel has transformed its vulnerability into an asset, honing its cyber capabilities to an unparalleled level. This didn't happen by chance. It's a story of foresight, determination and resilience, deeply intertwined with Israel's survivalist ethos. So let's chart the evolution of Israel's cyber prowess, 
a journey that has propelled this small nation into the global cyber elite. In the heart of the Middle East stands Israel, a nation known for its technological prowess and innovative spirit. The seeds of its cyber capabilities were planted as early as its inception, but they truly began to sprout in the face of adversity. The recurrent conflict and geopolitical complexity of the region forced Israel to innovate for survival. Out of this necessity, Israel began to focus intensely on technological advancements, cybersecurity being one of its prominent fields. Universities and military units started training programs that cultivated some of the world's finest cyber minds. It wasn't long before these efforts began to shape a national narrative, transforming Israel into a dystopian cyber fortress. In an era where digital knowledge is as vital as conventional education, Israel stands out with its distinctive approach to cyber education. This isn't about a few coding classes in high school or college. It's a meticulously planned and executed strategy that begins virtually at birth. The Israeli education system identifies and nurtures talent from an early age. By integrating basic coding skills into their early education curriculum, they create a foundational understanding of the digital world in the minds of the young. But it goes far beyond teaching kids how to code. They teach them how to think, to solve complex problems, to innovate and to adapt. These are the fundamental skills needed to excel in the ever-evolving landscape of cybersecurity. The mandatory age in Israel for national service is 18, so we are talking about 18, 19 young boys, if you wish. And girls. And girls, yes, they have also girls. You have very young people, young teenagers who have already homemade, homegrown skills to be hackers, to penetrate computers, to intercept information. Well, we take everything that exists in the industry and put it in the army. Uh, they learn how to maintain a PC, they learn how to maintain servers, a database. One of the first most important things to understand about the Israeli cybersecurity community and industry is that, yes, we start very young, not just in our 20s, but in our teens. I was a hacker when I was 13. When I was 18, it was my time to join the Israeli army. And the Israeli army is like a melting pot. Everybody serves, or mostly everybody serves, women and men. So we also have a more diverse ecosystem of talent. Now, the military service, because it is mandatory, the army has gotten really good at training that talent and then going through, you know, two months or two three months or maybe it's a couple of months or even a year and then churning through and going to the next generation of talent so it's an evergreen ecosystem every two years you have fresh people that are coming out into the industry after having proved their chops in the cybersecurity world working for the military so that's that's kind of like a rocket fuel for our industry this educational strategy reaches its zenith with the Talpiot program an elite training program run by the Israel Defense Forces they select the country's brightest minds, often as young as 18, and immerse them in an intensive course covering advanced topics in technology, cybersecurity, and intelligence operations. These individuals form the core of Israel's cyber defense force, their skills honed to the highest level in the crucible of this intensive training program. Such a focused approach to cyber education has turned Israel into a powerhouse of digital innovation and cyber capabilities. It has also created a pool of highly skilled cyber experts who, upon completing their military service, often go on to build successful technology startups. This has led to the emergence of a thriving cybersecurity industry within Israel, playing a significant role in its booming economy. The following sections would delve deeper into Israel's cyber espionage capabilities, bringing real life case studies to light and outlining their global influence. We will also explore the ethical implications of this digital warfare, illuminating the myriad of issues it raises. Hebron, a city in the Palestinian territories, has become a notable example of the intricate dynamics at play in the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. A particularly illustrative area is H2, which includes the historic Old City. Here, Israeli military bases and Palestinian neighborhoods intertwine, a complex weave that manifests from the contentious issue of settlements. In Hebron, 
particularly within the boundaries of H2, an advanced surveillance network is a fundamental part of everyday life. Streets are monitored by an extensive network of surveillance cameras, a practice defended by the Israeli Defense Forces, IDF, as a vital component of maintaining security. However, residents, particularly the Palestinians, often find themselves grappling with the reality of constant surveillance. The sophistication of the surveillance mechanisms extends beyond the visible cameras. One such instance is the Blue Wolf, an advanced surveillance system known for its state-of-the-art technology. Though specific operational details are closely guarded, its presence adds another layer to the city's surveillance landscape. Evidence of the pervasive nature of this surveillance emerges in anecdotes shared by Palestinian families residing in H2. Everyday activities, such as a child playing on a rooftop or a family gathering in a courtyard, have at times been interrupted by Israeli forces, acting on information provided by the surveillance network. While to some this may seem like an overstep, the Israeli defense would argue that it is a necessary precaution in a volatile area. The ambit of surveillance is not limited to the physical world. There's a widespread belief among Palestinians that their digital communications are also under scrutiny. The resulting atmosphere can inhibit free expression, as the fear of possible retribution could deter individuals from criticizing Israeli policies. From the Israeli perspective, this heavy surveillance is a matter of security. They argue that the tense situation and historical context of the region necessitate such measures. However, for the Palestinians living in Hebron, this intense scrutiny feels like an additional layer of control an invisible occupation that seeps through walls and screens, leading to a tense atmosphere that permeates daily life. As the landscape of conflict shifted from physical to digital, Israel found itself at the forefront of a new kind of warfare, cyber warfare. This wasn't about armored tanks or airstrikes, it was about bytes and bits, encryption and backdoors. Israel's Unit 8200, comparable to America's NSA or the UK's GCHQ, began to gain recognition for its ability to launch sophisticated cyber operations. The unit is reportedly the largest in the Israeli army and has been likened to the US National Security Agency, the NSA. Jointly with the NSA, it reportedly developed the Stuxnet virus that partially disabled Iran's nuclear program. Israeli officials claim it is a central pillar of the defense establishment. Their operations spread far beyond their regional borders, with cyber espionage becoming a primary tool in Israel's intelligence arsenal. And Iran is in the news tonight. Nuclear experts have found unexplained traces of plutonium and highly enriched uranium. A second secret nuclear enrichment facility. We don't have any explanation for the use of this enriched uranium. With time, Israel's cybernetic fingers began to reach across the globe, influencing international affairs from the unseen shadows of the digital world. Next in line would be the case study, the Stuxnet operation, where we will examine a real-life event that puts the power of Israel's cyber capabilities into perspective. Following this, we'll dive into the global impact of Israel's thriving cyber tech industry. Each step deepens our understanding of the unseen cyber power that's shaping global espionage and beyond. Let's continue our exploration into this elusive world. Why can't we talk more openly and publicly about stocks? Two answers before we even get started. I don't know, and if I did, we wouldn't talk about it anyway. Something as simple and innocuous as this becomes a challenge for all of us to maintain accountability control of our critical infrastructure systems. This actually contains the Stuxnet virus. The world of cyber warfare was forever altered with the introduction of Stuxnet, a highly sophisticated computer worm aimed at Iran's nuclear enrichment facility in Natanz. Designed to exploit four zero-day vulnerabilities, 
The worm propagated through USB drives, specifically targeting Siemen Step 7 software in the facility's centrifuges. Its effect was nothing short of groundbreaking, causing actual physical damage to the machinery, an unprecedented feat in the history of malware. Believed to be a US-Israel joint venture, Stuxnet marked a turning point in state-sponsored cyber warfare, sparking ethical debates and shaping cybersecurity policies worldwide. Its legacy as a physical disruptor opened the doors to a new era of cyber-physical attacks, illustrating the blurred lines between legitimate national security measures and potential abuse. Parallel to the physical disruption of Stuxnet, the invisible infiltration by Pegasus spyware created by the Israeli firm NSO Group came to light. Unlike Stuxnet, which wreaked havoc on machinery, Pegasus was designed to silently infiltrate smartphones. With the capability to monitor calls, messages, emails and even activate cameras and microphones without the user's knowledge, Pegasus targeted journalists, activists and political dissidents with confirmed cases in several countries. The widespread use of Pegasus for surveillance raised critical questions about privacy, human rights and governmental accountability. Legal actions and international condemnation followed its exposure, drawing attention to the fragility of individual privacy in the connected world. The controversy surrounding Pegasus further fueled the ongoing debate about ethics and governance in the digital realm. Together, Stuxnet and Pegasus symbolize the complex challenges of our cyber age. They represent significant advancements in cyber capabilities, epitomizing both the promise and peril of a world more interconnected yet vulnerable than ever before. The haunting legacy of these two groundbreaking cyber tools continues to shape the global landscape, forcing us to confront the realities of privacy, security and ethics in a world dominated by technology. In the midst of global digital warfare, Israel has emerged as a powerhouse of technological innovation. The nation's robust cybersecurity industry is thriving, with hundreds of cybersecurity firms operating within its borders. This ecosystem isn't just serving Israel's national security interests, it's reshaping global cybersecurity practices. Israeli cybersecurity companies are on the front line, protecting critical infrastructures, financial institutions, and even governments around the world. The nation's cyber experts are sought after consultants in global tech hubs, from Silicon Valley to Singapore. Their influence underscores Israel's significant role in the world's cybersecurity narrative. Next, we'll delve into the ethical implications of cyber espionage and the challenges it poses to our globally interconnected society. As we continue, we will also consider the future implications of this ever evolving cyber power struggle. The journey into this clandestine world only gets more intriguing. But as Israel's cyber prowess grows, so too do the ethical questions surrounding its use. The realm of cyber espionage is shrouded in ambiguity. It's a silent game of chess where the players are hidden and the stakes are high. The power to infiltrate, to watch, to manipulate, to destroy. It's a power that walks a fine line between national security and potential misuse. As we've seen, these cyber capabilities can affect not only national affairs, but also permeate the everyday lives of ordinary individuals. This raises pressing questions. Who gets to wield this power? How is it used? And perhaps more importantly, how can it be misused? The international community grapples with these questions with no easy answers in sight. As we stand on the threshold of a new era of digital warfare, it's clear that the invisible cyber powerhouses like Israel will continue to shape global events. The tendrils of their influence extend far beyond their national boundaries, weaving an intricate web of digital dominance that's as awe-inspiring as it is ominous. As we hurtle forward into an increasingly interconnected future, understanding these hidden dynamics becomes all the more crucial. This unseen world, where battles are fought not with bullets but with bites, is the new frontier. It's a frontier that we must continue to explore and question, for in its shadows lie the keys to our digital future. This concludes our deep dive into Israel's unseen cyber power. It's a journey that invites us to reconsider the contours of power and influence in the digital age. It serves as a potent reminder of the critical role of cyber power in our world today and the ethical implications that we must confront as we move forward. 
Join us next time as we delve into more hidden corners of the online world, unearthing stories that lie beneath the surface of the digital expanse.